Okay, let's continue our series on Stoicism, where we go through the Enchiridion and the translation How to Be Free by Professor A. A. Long. Okay, and we have ended up at chapter 29, <clears throat> well, which is a little longer, but it has two very interesting points in it. In every undertaking, examine its antecedents and their consequences, and only then proceed to the act itself. If you don't do that, you will start enthusiastically, because you have not thought about any of the next stages. Then, when difficulties appear, you will give up and be put to shame. Do you want to win at the Olympics? I do. Two, of course, because it's a splendid thing. But examine the project from start to finish, and only go in for it after that. You must train. Keep a strict diet, stay off pastries, submit to a regular exercise regime every day, summer or winter, drink no cold water and no wine except at appropriate times. In other words, you have to surrender yourself to the trainer just as you would to your doctor. Then in the actual contest you have to dig in alongside the other contestants, nobody really knows what that means. And perhaps dislocate your hand or twist your ankle, swallow a lot of sand, get flogged, and with all of this, lose the fight. When you have thought about this, go and compete if you still want to. But if you don't think first, you will be acting like children who play at wrestling for a while, then at being gladiators, then trumpeters, and then stage performers. That's what you are like too. Now an athlete, next a gladiator, then an orator, now a philosopher, but nothing in yourself as a whole. You are like a monkey, mimicking whatever you see, as one thing after another takes your fancy. You haven't pursued anything with due consideration or after thorough review. You mess about and don't put your heart into things. It's the way some people who have seen a philosopher and heard one speak, like Euphrates, though no one can really speak like him, want to go in for philosophy themselves. Dear man, Think first about what the thing is like, and then study your own nature to see whether you are up to it. Do you really want to compete in the pentathlon or the wrestling? If so, you had better study your arms and your you had better study your arms and your thighs and your hips. People differ in what they are naturally suited to. Do you suppose you can go in for philosophy and eat and drink just as you do now, or get angry and irritated in the same way? You are going to have to do without sleep, work really hard, stay away from friends and family, be disrespected by a young slave, get mocked by people in the street, and come off worse in rank, office or courtroom, everywhere in fact. Think about all this, and then see whether you want to exchange it for calm, freedom and tranquility. If not, don't go near philosophy. Don't be like children playing first a philosopher, and after that a tax collector, then an orator, then an imperial officer. These professions don't match. You have to be one person, either good or bad. You have to work either on your commanding faculty or on external things. Either the inner or the outer should be the focus of your efforts, which means adopting the role either of a philosopher or of an ordinary person. Okay, a long chapter, but I think we can summarize it relatively quickly in two points. On the one hand, this is the ancient Greek way of saying, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And the second part is, ask yourself if this is really what you want in life and what you need to do. Now, let's expand a little bit upon a bit upon that because those are two rather vague statements the check yourself part a lot of people and i'm sure you know those kinds of people maybe you are one of those types of people a lot of people have a tendency in life to dash in headlong and although that can be fun at times to just immerse yourself into something and see what happens Generally speaking, that may not necessarily be a very good idea <clears throat> for the reason that you have not actually thought through what you are getting into. Now, I hope this also really speaks for itself. There's not something I really have to explain further. But I see this a lot too. I see this in my job where I instruct college students who sometimes dive into a course they have no idea what it's really about, they have no idea how much work it's going to be, but it sounded like fun or something. This is not 
me trying to to bully people or to negatively reflect on them everybody has their own reasons to do things but it's not unique to college students you see this in a lot of people they come up with some sort of um, I need to use an interesting term there but like a not entirely thought through plan I'm trying to keep it clean and then they just do something and that often doesn't make sense the stoic way of life is about deliberation about very careful living about knowing what you are doing and trying to figure out what it is you're trying to get into right and then and in my mind only then when you have laid such a careful foundation you really know what you are getting into and how to get there now that's all very abstract so let's make this really concrete Pretty much the second week of me entering university, I found out that there was such a thing as a PhD. I was very fascinated by teaching at a post-secondary education level because I've always enjoyed giving presentations, doing sort of public speaking things, talking to people, trying to explain things to people. So I thought that would be a very interesting career path for me. But very quickly, I found out that if you want to do that, and I did a whole separate video on, on what to expect when you're doing a PhD, so I'm not going to repeat all that here, but very quickly I found out that if you really want to make headway in a post-secondary educational institute, you need to have a PhD. So I understood at that point that for me, stopping in a master's degree, if I really wanted to pursue that career path, would not be an option, right? So this is... 19 year old SBRE Brown. I was not the intellectually enlightened giant then that I am now um, as most of us are not at 19 years old but I was thinking through what I wanted to do with my life at that age and that meant that in my case I obtained a Bachelor of Science degree then I obtained a Master of Science degree and then I obtained a PhD as quickly as I could because I knew exitus acta probat Right? The end justifies the means. Or in this case, that was the means to my end. I wanted to get to a very specific place. And the way for me to get to that specific place was to go all the way through graduate school, three years of bachelor, two years of master's degree, five years of PhD. That was a long road. Now, I'm not saying this to toot my own horn or anything. I'm just trying to give a very concrete example of planning something through, understanding the antecedents. What do you need? This is just logic terminology. The One of the three pillars of Stoicism is logic, the study of formal logic, logical reasoning, and an antecedent and a consequent are uh, very specific parts of what we call a logical syllogism. So a syllogism in the Stoic mind would look something like this. If it rains, then I get wet. It rains, therefore I get wet. That is a logically valid syllogism. And in this case, if it rains, it rains is the antecedent, and I get wet, that is then the consequent. That's just logical terminology, okay? So you look at the antecedents in your life, and you look at the consequence, not the consequence, the consequents, okay? What are the antecedent conditions? Well, in my example, what do I need? Well, sometimes it's easiest to reason back. What is my consequent? The consequent is, then I will teach at a post-secondary institute. Okay, what antecedent do I need? PhD. If I have a PhD, then it will be easier for me to teach at a post-secondary institute of education. I have a PhD, therefore, I now teach at a post-secondary institute of education. It took me multiple years to get there, to get a position there. I did sort of things, I, I did teach, but I never got really got a, a permanent position anyway. So you reason through all the steps, and by reasoning through those steps, sometimes again, easy to start with the therefore, right? I want to end up here. What are the ifs I need to meet to get there? Because until all the ifs, all the antecedents are in place, the consequent will not occur. It will not come to be into this world because the necessary conditions for that consequent to arise are not in place. This sounds very rational, 
but to a large degree, Stoicism is a very rational school of philosophy. It kind of glorifies reason and your ability to think, which we all can do. Everybody can think, but not everybody thinks logically or thinks in a very effective manner. This is not a value judgment. This is life. And you can learn to think in a more efficient way. And I think one way to think in a more efficient way is to look at the antecedents and the consequence in your life. What ifs do you need and what thens do you get? Right? And there are no guarantees in life, but at least this is a sort of structured way to think about things. What was there about the second part? Because he said something interesting there too. He's now talking about being a philosopher, right? And again, for the Stoics, that's not sitting in an office as a professor thinking about things. That is applying teachings to your life, right? Um, do you suppose you can go in for philosophy and eat and drink just as you do now or get angry and irritated in the same way? Yes, yeah, very, very interesting. Um, and then he ended with... You have to, uh, to work either on your commanding faculty or on external things. Either the inner or the outer should be the focus of your efforts, which means adopting the role either of a philosopher or of an ordinary person. Well, we have talked pretty extensively in this series about the indifference, things that don't really influence your virtue, that you maybe should not really pursue or you can pursue as, they, as long as they don't get into the way of virtue. See the earlier videos on that. I don't want to reiterate all that. So either you focus on all the external things, health and wealth and these kinds of things, and then you are an ordinary person, or you say, no, I'm going to focus on something else, and then you can be a philosopher. And you can say, no, I want to lead a virtuous life. I want to pursue these things. I want to be wise and courageous and just and, and uh, uh, temperate, right? Okay, and that's very important. And um, Epictetus is quoted to have said, anev tu prati, Merhi tu lehin. Uh, this is uh, quoted by Olius Gellius. Uh, Olius Gellius, Olus um, um, Gellius, sorry, uh, was a, a Roman grammar, a grammarian. And what this means is Greek. It, it says without deeds, without deeds, limited to words, right? And that is a stage that a lot of people, when they start with philosophy, I think kind of fall into. They can quote, in this case, Seneca or Epictetus or Marcus Aurelius, but they are not applying those teachings to their lives. And in the mind of a Stoic, then you fail. The whole point of Stoicism is not to be able to quote Seneca or Epictetus. The point of Stoicism is to lead a life of eudaimonia, a happy, rich, fulfilling life. And you get that by training what is translated here as your ruling faculty. Egemonikon in, in the uh, uh, Greek term. Your ruling faculty, as I just said, Stoicism reveres your mental acuity, your ability to reason logically, to reason appropriately. If you reason inappropriately, you'll be unhappy. If you reason appropriately, you'll be happy. Okay? And how you reason appropriately, that is what we're going through all these chapters for, right? That's what Epictetus is trying to teach you. So unless you can really put the teachings into practice, you're not making prokopse, you're not making any progress. And the progress is important, and the progress won't stop until the day you die. You can't say, yeah, enough progress, now I'm a stoic, done. That's not how this works. Every day you work on yourself to be the very best version of yourself you can be. Errors will creep in. That's okay. But you have to live these principles. You cannot be a stoic and go around with road rage and shouting at colleagues and doing all kinds of bad things because you're angry all the time. Then you're not being a stoic. You're not sticking true to these stoic principles. So, the model of the story for today. Think things through before you start. And secondly, ask yourself if this is the path for you. Because it may not be. Stoicism is not for everyone, and that's okay. Maybe you're not a Stoic, 
Maybe you're a cynic or maybe you're an Epicurean or God forbid a peripatetic. I'm just joking. It doesn't matter. You have to pick what you works best for you. And that's important. For me, it's Stoicism. For you, it may be something completely different. And that's good. But until you can live the principles that you preach, it's not enough yet. And that's an everyday struggle for everyone. Everyone who follows a path like this, it's a struggle. For me too, it's a struggle. So there, are, there are days when it's a lot harder than other days. But on those days, you need the teachings the most. Okay, I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you next time. And everyone who's really enjoying these videos, thanks. It means a lot to me, and also means a lot to me to hear that, because these videos don't get as many views as the pen reviews. So at some point, I had to ask myself, is this something I want to keep doing? But a number of you have been very warm and supportive of this, and a lot of you have pointed out that this has meant a lot to you, has maybe even made differences in your life, and that is fantastic to hear. That makes me really happy. And because of that, I continue with them, even if these videos only get 600 views. It's okay. If those are 600 motivated people who really find this interesting, I'll be there every step along the way. Okay? So, see you next time.